Good morning, everyone, and happy Saturday. My name is Callie, and this is another weekend of Clarinets, Cats, and Coffee. In this video, I am going to share a list of things that changed my clarinet life when I discovered them. And some of you may chuckle at some of these things and, uh, and the little stories that I tell, and others may be like, huh, I didn't know that. So we'll see, maybe, hopefully this will be entertaining at the very least. Before we do that, I wanna say thank you to all of my patrons. Your support means a lot and it's been wonderful getting to know all of you over the past two years. So if you are not yet a patron and you want to support these educational videos, please consider clicking on the link below and becoming a patron of my channel. All right, so time for this list. First thing is, tonguing off of the reed. When I was a very small child, I, one, didn't know you were supposed to use your tongue at all. So for, I don't know, a good month, I was just going, oh, oh, oh. that's a lot of work, I know. And then I had this big, scary, mean substitute music teacher one day who yelled at me for not tonguing, but he didn't tell me how to tongue the right way. So in my fear, ah, I was tonguing off the roof of my mouth and it, it sounded awful, but nobody corrected me until I started taking private lessons many years later. So if, if your articulation sounds like that, make sure you start tonguing off of the reed instead, because otherwise you'll never be able to make your articulation sound clean. So when I learned tip of the tongue to the tip of the reed, it changed my life and I was so happy. Number two, big game changer was keeping my chin flat while I play. And I know many of you guys know this and you're probably chuckling like, oh, I learned that before I could even remember anything, you know, but I didn't know that. So when I learned that you're supposed to flatten out your chin, it really opened up my sound and gave me a much bigger tongue. <laughs> That's what we call strawberry chin, when everything is like mm, squished up into the reed. What you want is the chin to go down and open up oh, so that your reed can really vibrate. The next thing uh, that changed my life was discovering that the top lip has muscles that could be engaged while you play. So I don't play double lip embouchure very often. Sometimes I'll just practice with it to kind of get everything to like relax a little bit in my air and just, you know, strengthen my embouchure. But man, those of us who do single lip embouchure, we still need to have that top lip engaged. And man, really pressing down on the top of the mouthpiece, especially playing up high, really, really helps so much. So big game changer for me. And one little thing that I like kind of discovered on my own that actually really helped me a lot was instead of uh, just making my lip go like, I don't know, kind of like normal on the top, I actually kind of like curl it in a little like this. You probably see me before I play, I'm like tucking in my embouchure and getting everything like into gear and stuff. You know, like part of that is just trying to like really bring my top lip, it curls it into itself and then it makes a really firm like seal around my gums and my teeth. So, um, you know, if you guys are experimenting a little bit, I'd say, you know, experiment with that. Try curling the top lip into itself like this instead of growing and kind of go like this. So that can help you engage your top lip a little more if you're, I don't know, muscle structure is kind of like mine. It might, it might, Help you guys out a lot. Uh, the next thing that really made a huge difference in my sound is tongue position. So um, it was many years before I actually was aware of what my tongue was doing while I played aside from articulation. And when I was being coached on using proper tongue position, the thing, the syllable or the sound that uh, helped me the most was shh, like a high pitched, like SHH kind of sound. So some people, Think about it like 
sh like hissing or an E sort of shape in the mouth, but the shh sound kind of helps me relax the back of my throat. Um, Cause if you think E at the back of the tongue, at least for me, I mean, you can hear it in the way that I talk, the back of my tongue kind of goes a little bit too rigid and kind of high if I uh, use the E syllable. So it's different, you know, based on what part of the world you are in and what language you speak and things like that. So the, the sh sound really helped me a lot in keeping my tongue position high and consistent across the entire range. Uh, the other thing that made a huge difference um, in just tone, articulation, quality of sound, and consistency is keeping the jaw forward into the reed. So I have this, you know, my top teeth kind of go forward and my back teeth eh, kind of like that. All right, so I've got this, ugh, you know, my teeth are kind of funny. So if I push my jaw forward to where my teeth are straight up and down, then um, I will be less likely to bite up and pinch off the reed. So I push the jaw forward and boom, that helped so much. So another big thing, jaw forward. And I have um, my college teacher, Julie, to thank for that. Um, uh, another thing that really helped me out was learning this from a brass instructor instructor actually and you guys have heard me say this a lot but using the word home to breathe just you just exhale home and then you breathe in home and it really just fills all the way up to the bottom the next thing that was a major game changer was learning the chromatic fingerings for f sharp and for b natural so f sharp b natural using this fingering instead of this fingering, okay? And that works in, you know, the low register B and the middle register F sharp, and actually the altissimo register for E flat and D sharp, um, that, that fingering is interchangeable. So that made a huge difference. Also using the side two keys for F sharp, the middle, uh, the throat tone F sharp, instead of the front one, that made, that was like a major game changer in making my chromatic scale so much faster. And then as much as I hate this key, this key came in handy as well. So learning all of these alternate fingerings really made my life so much easier. Resonance fingerings for throat tones. So if you don't already know what those are, uh, throat tones are the notes in the middle of the range. So you've got G, a flat, A, and B flat, and that there are various enharmonic spellings. If you add fingers of the right and left hands to change how the note resonates through the instrument, and also uh, it can improve the intonation of the of the notes, uh, your your sound is going to be so much more even going uh, through that register. So this just kind of adds a little more length to the air. And then when I discovered that different fingerings have different intonation tendencies and quality of sound, uh, that also really helped me just play more in tune and with a better blendy sound with my neighbors. For example, um, like, you know, all, all of the like high B flat fingerings, for example, you've got the side B flat, you've got the whatever this is the banana key b flat you've got one and one b flat and they all have different timbre and different quality of sound and different intonation tendencies Different brands of instruments have different tendencies on those notes as well. So you can use different fingerings based on what you're trying to accomplish, which I thought was pretty cool when I discovered that. Another game changer that I learned when I was very young was that you don't have to play all of these pinky notes with the same pinky because that's why these pinky keys exist. So when I learned that you could alternate pinkies and never have to slide again, okay, not never, let's let's all be real there are instances where we have to slide and it just it just is really annoying but um anyway we could lower the chances of having to slide by using some kind of pinky puzzle pattern to achieve a smoother transition between notes so that was also a game changer next thing that really made me get 
a lot better, a lot faster, was religiously sticking to practicing Albert Scales 30 minutes every day from slow to fast. And I did that for many years and it really improved my sight reading, my endurance, my technique, and my evenness in my fingers. But that's quite a commitment. And um, if you're able to commit, you know, religious 30 minutes every day on Albert Scales, I promise it's gonna make your life so much easier. It, it certainly helped me. And then another thing that was, I recently did this maybe like, Oh, six or seven years ago, I decided to ditch the tooth guard over my bottom teeth because I was sick of relying on biting to play sometimes. Um, and I decided I ditched, I ditched the tooth guard and I started practicing double lip embouchure with doing long tones. And I would also practice overblowing 12th. So just practice, you know, doing different ex exercises on overblowing notes um, so that I could rely on my air support more than, you know, doing weird things with my jaw to get things to sound good and sound in tune. So um, that really, really made a huge difference. And I wish I had made that change earlier because I, I think I would have had more success earlier on in my career um, if I had not relied so much on having a little thing guarding my teeth. But um, some people really need it. I certainly um, don't mean to say that anybody who uses a tooth guard like relies too much on biting, but it was just too tempting for me. So I decided to just get rid of it. So I wasn't tempted and it forced me to train my air to do the right thing. And then the last thing um, is I, when I learned that even the tiniest scratch or nick or whatever on the mouthpiece could greatly impact one's sound and articulation, that made a huge difference as well. So I took much better care of my equipment after that. And I also inspect my mouthpiece on a regular basis to prevent weird things like that from happening. So I would love to hear what your experiences are. You know, what are some of the things in your past that really made a huge difference for you and for your playing? I would love to hear. And if you're part of the Facebook group for Clarinets Cats and Coffee, feel free to post anything you'd like this week. I want to hear what you guys are working on. And I guess that's it. So thank you all so much for watching. Have a good weekend. Have a good week. And as always, happy practicing. <laughs>